Hello everyone and welcome to the part 3 of building a recipe app using Django, Tailwind, and Flowbike. So in the last part, we created the update profile and update password functionality. And in the end, we created models such as recipe, instruction, and ingredients model. So in this part, we're going to create the crude functionality. So crude stands for create, read, update, and delete functionality. And we will do that on all of the models that we created. So if you are excited with that one, let's go ahead and continue building our Django recipe app. What we're going to do is we're going to create forms for our recipe app models. So here, let's click on the recipe. Let's create the forms.py. And then here, we're going to import our forms. So from Django import form. After that, we are going to import our models. So we have a recipe model, instruction, and ingredient model. So from in dot means the current directory, then we're going to select the models, and then we're going to import the recipe, recipe model, instruction model, and then ingredient model. Now we are going to create a form. So to create the recipe form, we're to call the class recipe, and then from the forms that we imported, we're going to call the model form. Then we set the class meta, and then we're going to select the model. So model is equals to recipe. Next is we're going to add here the fields that we want to be included in the forms. So Set here fields is equal to a tuple. So the first field that I want to add in my model is the category field that we have here. Then we're going to set the name, we're going to set the email, the description, cooking time, and serving time. So these three fields here will be auto these two will be automatically added, and this one we will add this after. In our view function so let's go back to our views and import the category field the name field image description book time and then serving so after we create our fields or after we create the field to full we're now going to create the widgets so here, we're going to use each of the category or each of the fields that we have here. Category, name, image, description. So for the first one, that would be the category field. So for the category field, that would be forms.select. This would be a select field. We're going to select from the set of specific um, predefined ca categories that we have. So what we're going to do here is select and the, we're going to add here the attributes. So the first attribute that we're going to add is the class. So we have to put that inside of a quotation mark. And then here we are going to create a variable that would contain the design from Tailwind. And we will pass that variable here in this class attribute that we have here. So here we're going to create a select area variable. For now, let's set it to an empty string. Then we're going to use this here select area so this is this will be used so that we can add these styles from the tailwind to our form so the next one here that we're going to add is the name for the name we're adding here the forms dot text input this is a text input field and we'll add here the attributes for that here we also have the class and this will be the input classes variable so we haven't created this into classes variable so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to put it here and for now let's set it for an empty string and we'll add the design from the flow byte after we create the form so next would be the image field for the image field this would be forms dot file input adding here a file then we're adding here the attributes for this attribute we will have again the class now for the image we will create a variable for 
image here and then we're going to set this to for image on this top here for underscore image I set it to an empty string for now let's go back here and we're going to create the description field set this to description just find the colon then forms dot the text area so this um, description is a text area then we're going to add here the attributes for the attributes it also have a class for class this would be the text area and here we're going to create the text area on the top here we're going to add a placeholder Then let's enter here the description. Afterwards, we're going to add here the number of rows. It would be three rows. And then the next field that we're going to create is the cook time. So for the cook time, this would be forms dot text input. And then add here the attributes and open and closing curly brackets. So it is showing a red here because we didn't add a comma. Next here, we're going to add a class for this one. So class and then add the input classes that we created, which is for now set to an empty string. Then placeholder. So the placeholder for this one is say enter cooking time. Then Next, we're going to create an input field for serving. So for serving, that would be a forms dot text input. And then we we'll add here the attributes. So for the attributes, we we'll add here a class and the input classes. Next would be placeholder. Then enter the enter how many people it can serve add a comma here so this would be the recipe form we're going to use this whenever we want to add a recipe and if you want to edit a the information of a recipe so next we're going to create a form for the instructions so for the instruction form let's go back to our model and let's check the contents of our instruction model here the only fields that i want to add is the step number and the instruction text so the recipe here will be added already if we can pull the primary key so what we're going to do now is go here and add those um, input fields so class instruction form so we want to make this as descriptive as possible so forms dot model form And then we're going to create the class meta and then we're going to add here the model that would be the instruction model we're going to set here the fields that we want to add so let's say for example that would be the step number and instruction text so what we can do is we can add here step number and instruction Next. Next is we're going to add the widgets and curly braces. Now we're going to add here the step number. So step number that we forms dot text input. Then the attributes would be first attribute would be the class, and that would be an input class. Next is, next attribute is the place folder so the place folder for this one is enter step number this one is the type of this one let's set it to number next we're going to go to the next field which is the instruction text 
So for this one, this will be a text input. So forms dot text input. Then we're going to add here the attributes. And here we're going to add the class, and then input classes, and then placeholder. This one would be enter instruction. So that would be the instruction form. For the next one, we're going to create a form for the ingredient model. Let's go back to our models and we'll see here that we have recipe, name, quantity, and metric. The only fields that I want to add in the form is the name, quantity, and metric. So we are going to get the recipe in a different way. So here, let's create the ingredient form. So be forms dot model form. Next is class meta. We're going to add here the model that would be the ingredient model. Next is the fields that would be the name, quantity, the metric, and the widgets. So the widgets would be the first one would be the name. This would be forms dot text input. Let's scroll that for a bit and zoom in. So it would be easier to see. Next is the attributes. And let's set the attributes. First attribute is the class attribute and set it to input classes. Next is the placeholder. Let's set it to enter a name. So this is the name of the ingredient. Next, we'll add here a comma. So a comma at the top. Next, we're going to set the input field for the metric field. So that was be forms select. This is a select. Then create the attributes. So for this form class, select area. Oops. Now we are going to add the quantity and then that would be forms dot text input so let's add here the attributes so add the attributes for this one let's fix this warning here by adding a comma so the attributes for this one would be first class class set it to input classes next one that would be the placeholder so placeholder and then we're going to enter quantity like that one then we are now successful in creating our forms but the last step that we're going to do is we're going to add the design from flowbyte for each of our individual input fields so the first thing that we're going to do is go to the flowbyte and find designs that we can use for input classes select area text area and for images as well so first let's search for a design for select area let's go here let's say text area and it would show us an example here of text area and then we can use the class on this example let's copy that until here after we copy that we're going to paste it in our select area and then after we do that, we are now going to search for a text area. So let's go back to go by and search for text area. Show here. And then we are going to search here an example of text area, just like this one. So let's copy this one right here. Okay. And then let's go back and paste it here i'm going to check it now the first one we want to get a design for select area so let me check that again i'm not sure if we copy the right thing let's just go back to the select area search for input field select 
Let's see, just form selector. Yeah? Let's just search for input field and then let's find it ourselves. So here, we're going to search for a design for select area. Let's just scroll down for a bit. So for select area, that would be a drop down. So let's try to search for drop down. Say select. So there you go. So that would be select on this one. So we're going to see here an example of select, and we will have this code that we have here. Let's just copy that. That would be the design that we're going to use. Let's go back and then to remove this part right here until here. And let's paste it. Okay, that works out. So let's now find one for the image. Now for the image, it's just like a file upload. So let's just search for file input here. And here, let's take this one. And then let's copy that. Okay, and let's go back and search for a normal input field. Let's say input field. So we'll just wait for this to load and we're going to choose something like this one. We want this one, the design. Right? We have here a icon and then on the right of that is the input field. So we're going to try to copy we have here so first thing that we're going to search for is the username so as you can see that is the label okay and then this is the input now let's go here and copy this design right here and then we want to change this from round, rounded none we want to change this to rounded dash r dash lg so we want the right side just like this one we want the right side to have a round but the left side we don't want any round here we want this to be straight so that we can add here a specific um, icon that we can use so that will be all for our forms so for the next one we will going to try to create the page wherein we can use these forms as well so see you on the next part Okay, welcome back. So in this part of the video, we are going to use the forms that we created. So currently, we have the recipe, instruction form, and the ingredient form. So one of the things that I noticed from the last video that we created is that we should have here the recipe form so that it would have the same format as other forms that we created. So now we're going to create a HTML file for the forms. So let's go here at our recipe app. And we're going to create the templates folder. And inside of the templates folder, we're going to create another folder which have the same name as our app, which is the recipe. So inside of this recipe folder, let's just click this folder and then create here the forms.html. Just like this one. And then what we're going to do now is we are going to um, copy the format that we have for the password so that we can have the similar design as well. But we're going to edit some of the contents of this one. So let us close this and we're going to remove all of the div elements that we have here because we won't need that for this part of the video or this page. So let's just remove this part. And then the next thing that we're going to do is that we are going to change the title. So for this part, I'm just going to use the title that we will receive on this part right here. So using this title, let's just copy it and paste it here on the updated password. And then what we're going to do is 
we are going to delete this load static here because we won't add any images on this page. So after that, I think we are done. Let's just change here the um, text that we have for the button. So from update password, let's just set it to submit. So let's go back. Then here, first thing that we're going to do is create a input for um, categories. So the difference between using the normal HTML for um, creating our forms and the technique that we're going to use for today is that we created the forms here on our form file. So we will use this for our HTML form page here. So each of the field here already have their class and then the design of the class. So this one, the select area here that we copied in the last video. So each of these are input fields in our HTML. So we have the text input, we have select. So these are all uh, the different fields that we are going to use for our forms. Now what we're going to do is we will create or we will adapt the design from this one to the page itself. So here, let us create here a for loop. So for each field of our form, so the form will come from our view function and then it will be passed as a um, variable here in our page. And then we're going to iterate over the fields that are inside of the form. So we're going to do that here. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a for loop for this one. So for the field inside of the form, then of course we need to close this for loop. So what we're going to do to close this is we will have a end for. So curly brackets and then percentage signs and then end for. Now we're going to use the um the forms that we have here. So for the whole recipe app, all of the forms that we have would be included or we can use this form.html here for all of the models or for all the forms that we have here. So let's say, for example, we have a form for the recipe. So for the recipe, this is the set of fields that it, it will going to have, the category, the name, image, description, cook time, and serving. So for instructions, the fields would be the step number and the instruction text. And then for the ingredients form, the fields we have, for our forms, forms would be the name, the metric, and the quantity. So in this single forms file that we have, we will be able to show the input field for each of our forms here. So what we're going to do is add a design here for each of those form fields. So the first thing that we're going to add a design to is the field for, let's say, for example, the forms recipe form, just like this one. So the first field is the category. So we already have the design that will be the select area. So what we need to do now is create a if statement here. So if the field name is equals to category, we are going to display a certain design. So let's say, for example, here. So if we're going to create an if block here. So we will add the percentage sign. If the field that we have here in our for loop, if the field is Fill that name is equal to category. Just like this one. And then we are going to close this if block that we have here. So we'll have a partner and if. Just like this one. So if the field name is equal to category. So if you go back here, the category is a select area. And then we are going to use this design for the select area tag. So let's go back to our um, flow byte. So here in our forms, we are going to find here an example design for the select area. So let's just scroll down for a bit. And the select area would be this one, the select input. Now this is the design for select input. As we can see here, we will have a label and then the select tag. So the select tag here is automatically created by this forms.select. And then we give it the attribute of class. So the class for this select tag that we have here is select area. So we basically have a copy of 
this code right here with this class. So we copied this class earlier in this select area variable that we have here. Now, the only thing that we need to do is that we need to add the label. So if we go back here on our uh, code, let's just scroll back, it have a label here. So this is not automatically created by the code that we have here. Therefore, we're going to create this. So let's just copy this part. So that would be this one. And then we're going to paste it in the form. So if the field name is equal to category, therefore category is a select area, we're going to first create the label for that select area. And then we are going to get the field dot label. So we're going to delete this part right here. And then we're going to add here the field dot label so that it would display the correct label. And for this one, for the four, we are going to create the ID or we're going to pull the ID of the field. So let's go back here and then delete this. So to do that, we'll add here a two curly braces and then we're going to call the field and we're going to pull the ID for label. Now this four attribute here would receive or would expect us to give it the ID. So we are going to get the ID of the label that is connected to the field, just like this one. And then what we're going to do next is that we were going to get the select field. So that would come from this forms.select. So let's now add this field here. That would be the field. So we will now able to replicate this design here using this code. So it would only display this part of the code if the field is field name is equal to category. Then next, what we're going to do is that we are going to create a design for field name and the model would be the name, just like this one. So we're going to go back here and then the name, the name field that we have here is a text input. So we're going to go back to our flow byte and let's look for a text input. Let's go scroll up for a bit. And then we're going to see here a design that we can use for text input. So the text input design that we have here is this one. This is a text input here and we have a span that we have here, an icon. So this is the code for that. So we're going to copy only the label and the div. So let's copy that and then we're going to paste it here. But before we paste it, first we will add a condition. So if the name or the field name would be equal to the name. I'm going to close this out. Then we add here the and if. So we're going to paste here the code for the text input. And then here, we don't need the input tag here because this would be automatically created by this form's text input. So we just need to delete this part until the end and then here we're going to pass the field variable so that would display the field input that is created by the forms and then what we're going to do next is that we are going to get the field label and we're going to add it on the username here let's just return it to the label and then we are now going to get the id for the label and paste it here for the for attribute. So that would be all for this one. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to create a div for each of this field. So we're going to add here a div. Say so div tag, and then we're going to close this div. And then we're going to put it inside of this div. Okay, and then we're going to create a class here with the my2. So it will add a space on the top and the bottom of this input tag. And we can also add this to our category field. So let's do that. Let's add a div with a class of um, my origin and y axis and add two for that. So that it would have a space. So this would be for the select 
and this part would be for text input and if we go back to our form we have many different um type here that is repeated just like this input classes so it will be easier for us in the future now what we're going to do is we're going to get the design for image for images let's like this one so we're going to ask here first if the field name is equal to image therefore we will display this kind of design so field name is equal to image so here we're going to add a closing tag here so that would be end if so we can close out this if block and then we are going to search for design for the field file input or the for images it's like this one let's go back to our forms here and let's go down and search for a design to select or to, to upload a specific file just like this one so this one this would be the design of this would be a label and the input and also a this one is just a kind of info for this block so we're not going to include that we'll just copy the label and the input itself then we're going to add it in our forms but before we add it in our forms let's create a div and then we're going to set this div so set the class of this div to my-2 and then paste the code inside of it so for this one what we're going to do is that we are going to first remove the input that we have here because this part is already added let's just copy that and then delete the input tag that we have here so what we're going to display is the field here and then for the label we will have a for attribute here but for this one what we're going to do is we're going to copy this because it will be the same paste it right here and then for this one the label we're going to paste it in here and then what we're going to do next is that maybe we want to add the description on the bottom but we're going to change this so as you can see here a profile picture is useful to confirm your are logged out into your account so we're going to copy this part and we're going to change the contents so it might work for us in the future as well so let us paste it directly below the field and then let's change this um content here let us see that this recipe image will be posted publicly just like that one and then the next things that we're going to add here is for our next model or the next field which would be the description which is a text area so for the description it's just the same but it is a text area so we're going to search for the design for the text area let's go here and scroll up so this is an example of the design for the text area so let us copy this design here and then after we copy that we're going to paste it in our forms but of course we're going to have an if block so if field.name is equal to description and then we're going to close this if block and then that be the end if so if the field name is equal to description we will have this set of design so then we're going to add here a div and then the class of the div is my or my margin y axis slash two and we're going to paste here the design so again we're going to remove this text area because this is already created by our forms text area so let's just delete that and here we're going to add the field to display this uh, forms that it created next is we're going to retrieve the field label let's just copy that and paste it here and then going to get the id of the label and we're going to pass it to the for this one so this is how we can create the design for text area for text area so as you can see here it is also a text input for cook time so we already have that kind of design on the name let's just copy this one then we're just going to change the field name because that is the same also let's just change it here and then we're going to add the field name which is the cook time so let us paste here the cook time and all of the fields here will be the same so we don't have to change anything then the next one that would be 
also a text input that would be the survey so we just copy it again and change the variable for the condition that we have here the name of the field so serving copy that and then let's paste it here so again this field here will only be displayed if the field name is equal to the name of the field that we added here so we can reuse this for other forms as well because they don't have the same one so we have the step here step number and instruction so step number is also a text input as well as this instruction text right here so we're just going to copy the code that we have for text input which is this one and then we're just going to change the name let's go here and we're going to copy the step number and then we're going to paste it here okay then we're going to copy another one for the instruction text and let's copy the instruction text that we have here we're going to paste it here then for the next one the next form we have the ingredient form we have three here one is a text input and a select area and one another text input here so as you can see we already have the name here so we don't have to repeat it it will also display an input so we just add here the metric we don't have that yet the metric is a select so this one is the code for select the category so let's just go here and at the bottom let's just paste the design for the select and then we're going to retrieve the name of the field which is the metric i'm just going to paste it here and then here is a text input the quantity so let's go here and copy this part and then paste it here and change the name to quantity okay so now we successfully created our form so in the next videos we are going to use this form to be able to create our records for each of this model that we have so that will be all for this session welcome back so in the last session we created our forms and now we are going to make this forms functional by using it we're going to create our first new function right here so first we're going to import some stuff so from django.contrib.auth.decorators we're going to import the login require so this would force the users to log in first before they can view a certain page so ne the next one is from django.shortcuts we're going to import render so for the render this would render our page and redirect so we will use this whenever we are done and we want to redirect the user to other pages as well and then get object 404 we're going to use this so that we can check our database and if a certain a, a certain record is in the database we have many uses of this get object 404, 404 and we're going to show it to you once we use it so another one that we're going to add here or import is the models that we have so from that models and we're going to import the category model the recipe model the ingredient model and the instruction model and then we created different forms for each of these models so we're going to import that as well so from forms we're going to import the recipe form the ingredient form and the instruction form so it's all of the forms that we are going to import now the first view function that we're going to create is a view function that would allow us to be able to create a certain recipe so we're going to first call the login required so that all the users who are who are logged in can access this certain function and can access the page so def we're going to create recipe this view function then we're passing in the request and then if so first let us render the page so return then render so this would be the request and then we will pass here the address of the page so that would be the recipe folder and the forms that HTML. so recipe and form that HTML. so i guess we can change this to form and not forms Let's make that more descriptive because it's only so we're going to set to form only and then um after this one we're going to pass here a dictionary so for this one we're going to pass the title for the form form will receive this uh, title here and then we're going to name it create recipe and then next one is we're going to pass here the form so we don't have the form yet so we're going to build it first so here or we're going to call it first so if 
the form would be equal to the residue form that we created, just like this one. And then we're going to pass in the form here. Form would be equal to the form. And then let us try to test that out. We don't have any functionality yet, but what we want to do here is that we want to display the form at HTML that we have here, and it would receive the fields from this form here. So as you can see here, we are iterating over this form that we pass here to retrieve all of the fields of this certain form. So this receive form that we created will only have a set of models or set of fields, which is the category name, image description, booking time, and then the survey. So we would um, iterate over all of those fields, so display them. So we have here the condition. So if they see a category, they will display that. And if the system see a name field, we we'll display this one. So let's go back here and create a URL for the create recipe function, new function that we have. So to do that, we're going to call in the path, then um, parentheses, then inside of it, we're going to create a URL. So let's say create. So that would be like on the page that would be recipe create. Let's check that one because we're going to create. We have the app name here as create, so it will be connected to this one. So recipe slash create. And then here we are going to access the views. So to access the view function we have, so from dot, we're going to import the views. That would be this one. Then we can now access the view functions that is inside of that views file. So views, then dot, then we can now see the create recipe that we have here. So create recipe, and then we're going to add here a name so that we will we can uh, use this in the future. So the name would be create recipe so that it will be more descriptive. Then what we're going to try next is that we are going to try and access this create. And let's see if it would display our form. So to do that, let us open our terminal and then let's run python manage that by the server. So it runs without any errors and let's try to open the page. And it opens the page right here. So currently we are still signed in. So let's sign out first and let's try to sign in again. So then go. Then 8363 be the password that you want here. You can add it here. And then you can now go ahead and access the recipe app. Then the create uh, view function. So let's see that it shows here the uh, form. So as you can see here, we have the category field and then the name field the image, description, cooking time, and serving time. And in the future, we can change this icon here because it doesn't make any sense at the current moment. But um, we can easily change this by changing the SVG that is called on this part right here. So as you can see, we are iterating over the fields that are in the form. And if they see a category, it will display this part. That is this part right here. And then it will display this part. If it see a field name, it will display this part right here. So that will be all for this one and then we are now going to make a functionality for this one so currently we are just displaying the recipe form in the form.html so currently it doesn't have any functionality this button here would not allow us to be able to upload the or save the recipe so let us now um, create a functionality for this create recipe view function that we currently have so to do that let's go back here and open the recipe and we're going to create an if block so if the request is e request that method is equal to post so if we receive a post request then we're going to show something different so i'll just pass for now and then we will have else so else we will dis just display the form so if there is a post method we're going to do something different if else um we're just displaying the form so right now we're just displaying the form because we don't have any post requests just yet. So we can now go here and we can create the uh, functionality. So for that, you're going to create another form here. So we cannot access this form because it is in the else block. So if the, the post method is, um, if the request method is post, we are going to create a form that is equal to the recipe form. And then the recipe form, the request here is post request that post and then you're also going to request dot files because currently in our form recipe we have a input here that would receive a file input so let's check here again if we added here so one of the crucial things that 
um, we missed here on this part is we need to add the encryption type for this one. So and type. So we should set this to multi-part slash form data so that we will be able to receive the image that will be sent. So let's go back here to the view function. And then what we're going to do next is that we are going to first validate if the um, answers in the form is valid. So to do that, if form that is valid, so it will check if the inputs in the form is valid, then we will pass here for now. In this part, if the form is valid, of course, we're going to save the data, but we will also have an else block. Now for the else block, we would send here the uh, message that the specific, uh, what do you call this, the form that we added here have an input that is invalid. Therefore, we're going to send a message to the user. So what would be the message that we are going to send? So to do that, we're going to create a message. So first, before we can create a message, we should import the message. So from Django dot contrib, we're going to import the messages here. So we can use the message that we have on our base.html file, the one that have an alert design. So we're going to use that. So first in this one, we're going to send a message to so messages that error because this is an error. And we're going to pass here the request and the request, uh, the message that we want to send that would be fail to create recipe. That one to make it a little bit simple. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to um, go back here and then add the functionality for this one. So we're going to add the recipe is equal to the form. And the form, let's save that form, but we will not commit just yet because as you can see on this form that we have here, we didn't add the, the field for the category or the mean, I mean the created by, we didn't add the created by field in this form that we have here. So as you can see, we have the category and then we skip the created by. So we need to first add a value for the created by. So we don't, uh, we won't uh, commit this just yet. So we'll set the commit to false and then we now have the recipe so the recipe we can access the created by here and then we're going to set the created by to the user who requested the post request so request that user and then we are going to now save this so recipe that save then of course we will add a message so messages dot success and then we pass here the request and then the message the recipe created success so for now let's just try that out and let's see if we can um create a recipe so let's go back to our page and let's see if we don't have any errors so i think that we don't have any errors let's now try to choose a category let's say for appetizers and snacks and then here i'm just going to add a random here maybe Let's choose main dishes, save a double here. And then for the description, this is a very a Philip, Filipino meal. Like that one. And then the cook time, I think maybe that would be 30 minutes, I guess. Uh, the serving, maybe four people. Okay. And then I'm not going to add an image yet because I don't have a prepared image for now. But the beauty of forms is that here in our models, we have here set a default image for the recipe so if we don't upload any image we will use a default image this default recipe image that svg and then we can see this default image in our static no that would be on our media so this one right here default recipe image so it's going to use this image right here so we're going to see it because it is an svg but it will use it if the user didn't upload any images so Let's now go back to our page and submit this form. And let's see if we successfully created one. And it shows us that the recipe is created successfully. So that works. Let's now try and open up our database. And let's look for the recipe table. As you can see here, adobo. And the image is this one, the default recipe image that we have. And then this is a Filipino meal, 30 minutes of cook time, serving four people. And this is the other information as well that, that is auto-generated, created at, and updated at. And also the category so that the category that we choose is the main dishes and if we go 
to the recipe category, you can see here that is the ID of number two. So we successfully created a recipe using our view function and our forms. So for the next one, we are going to try to create other forms for the our other view functions to create the ingredient and also to create the instruction uh, records. So see you on the next one. Hello everyone and welcome back. So for the last section of our video, we created the create recipe view function. Now this view function is used so that we can create a recipe record. And we do that by using the recipe form. Now we can also use this recipe form so that we can create our update functionality. So in this section of the video, we will create the update recipe view function. So before that, let us open our database and let's go ahead and open the recipe table. And as you can see here, we have a field called ID. Now, ID is a unique. For each record, they will have a unique ID. So this ID would also be used for us to be able to update this specific record because each record would have a unique ID. So if we are able to get this primary key, we can update that record. So let's go ahead and create our update recipe view function. So to do that, first, the user who will update the recipe should be logged in and then we're going now to, to create the view function update recipe. Now this view function would take the request and then the recipe primary key. Now this primary key would, the value of this primary key would be the ID that we have for this um, specific record that we have here. So we will get that as a argument for this recipe primary key parameter. Now using the primary key that we get, we can access the recipe model. Using the get object 404, it would take the recipe model and then it would also take the primary key of the certain record. So PK, that means primary key, and we will pass here the recipe primary key. And then we will add here one more thing. We want to make sure that before the user are able to update the recipe, the user should be the one who created that recipe. They, can, they can't update a record that is not theirs or a recipe that is not theirs so what we're going to do is we're going to add here the created by this is a field on our recipe model and we will set that to request that user so basically what we're doing here is we're getting first using the recipe primary key we're getting a specific record in the recipe model and the condition is that we want to get the primary key or we want to get the record that matches the primary key or the id and also, we want to make sure that it is created by the user who is re requesting this update recipe view function. So we can use the get object or 404 for that. So get object or 404 would get the object if it can see it on the database and also if it follows the condition that you give. Or if it didn't find that object, it would return to us a 404. Now, what we can do is if we see or if we successfully retrieve the record, we will put it inside of a variable, which is we would call it the recipe. Now, what we want to do is to first view the form that we have, and we want to be able to display all of the information from the record that we receive. So here, we will have return, then we want to have the render here, the request. So we want to render the form that we have, so that the location of that is recipe, then form.html, just like on this one. We want to display the recipe form using the form.html here. So we're going to pass here a dictionary. So that would be, we're going to pass a title. And let's set that title to, let's say, for example, update recipe. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pass here also the form. Now let's create the form for this one. So we would use still the recipe form. We can use this to be able to update the recipe as well. Now it would receive a parameter instance. Now the instance would be the record that you get or you want to update, which is the contents of this recipe variable that we have here. So we will set the parameter instance and we will pass in here the recipe variable as the argument. And then we are going to store that in a form variable. And then we're going to pass that form variable to this one right here, to this dictionary. So that would be the form then form just like on this one wherein we are creating the recipe record using the recipe form however in this part we're not passing in any primary key or any record so we don't have the instance here so using the instance parameter we, this would um get the record 
the record is this one right here wherein we retrieve it in the recipe model or recipe table using its primary key and after we re retrieve that specific record we're going to pass that record here in the instance and then the recipe form would be able to display the contents of that record to the form itself so for us to be able to see that we're going to create a url path for that so the path would be update slash then here we want to be able to pass the primary key to the url so to do that we're going to add here an int so expecting an int which is the primary key and we'll add here the the one that we created which is the recipe primary key parameter here on this update recipe view function next is that we are going to add here a slash at the end to make sure that would work so now we can retrieve or get the views and access the update recipe view function that we created and then we can set here the name for that view function so let's say update recipe still so that we can call it on other pages as well and then what you have uh, what you can see here is that we set the update url and then here we're going to pass the primary key of the specific record so let's say for example we want to update the this record here which have a primary key of one or an id of one we're going to pass one to the end of the url which is expecting also an int which is a recipe primary key so let's see that on action let's go ahead and look at this we don't have any errors so i think it updated successfully now and then let's go ahead and open our page in here let's log out for now and then log in again so make sure to make sure that we are currently refreshed and all of our changes are now activated so in this page what we're going to do is we're going to access the recipe and then we're going to access the update url and then we're going to pass here the primary key of the record that we want to update so that would be the id of one so that is the primary key that we want to update and let's press enter so as you can see here let me zoom in for a bit to show that properly as you can see here the um the records or the data that we passed or the data that we can get from this specific record is what is selected in the form so as you can see here the name is adobo if we go back here it would show that name so what we did on our view function is that the record that we retrieve from this variable is passed as an instance to the recipe form so it would uh, get all the value that we have for each of this field and it would set it as the default value that we can have here and then using that we can update each of this record so let's say for example we don't want the or we want to update the cook time for this one so let's say for example that would be one hour so let's change this and delete that one hour and then let's submit this form so for now it won't be able to update data because we don't have any functionality for that whatsoever we just have the functionality wherein we can kind of um show here the data that we currently get from this code that we have here so what we want to do is add the functionality wherein we can update this data so to do that we would receive a request method post so just like what we have on this one wherein we submitted the form using the submit button so we are expecting here a request that have a method of post so that would be if the request dot method equals equals to post here then you would do something so that would be when the user submits the form or click the submit button so else if the user didn't submit any any request and he wants to access this update recipe we will only display the data just like this one so whenever we try to access this um url again it would just only show to us our data or the data from the instance but it would not be able to update it so it will only update it if you click the submit button or you made the request which is the post now what we're going to do is we are going to first use the recipe form and then you will pass here the request request method would be post and then we have here the request.files because the user might want to also change the image that we use for the dish or the recipe so we also want to pass here the instance so the instance would also receive the record that we have in here so that is what we want to update so we pass it into this instance and then what we're going to do is we're going to pass this to the form so this would be the new value of form and then what we're going to do is if we're going to check 
if the form or the data that is passed to our form is valid. So we're going to check first if, so that would be inside of this indentation, if the form that is valid, meaning all of the um, data that the user added is valid, therefore we're going to do something. Else, if it's not valid, we will return an error. So that would be the messages, that error, and we're going to pass through the request. And then let's say field to update dish. Then for the, if the data is valid, we are going to save the form. And then we're going to send a message that would be the success message. And we're passing the, here the request. And let's say that the dish, let me change this one here, dish updated successfully. There we go. So using that code, we will now able to update the data from the recipe record. So let's try that out and let's refresh this one. So as you can see, it still shows us the record from the primary key or from the record in our database that have a one as the ID for the recipe model. Now we want to change this. Let's say a double manok. That's a Filipino dish. And then we will not add the description. Let's change this to, let's say, one hour. And let's say this one, this recipe is for enough for five people. And then we're going to submit the form. And it shows us here that the dish is updated successfully. And we can check that if it is up updated successfully because it would show here the info. So the new, uh, the new value for the name would be manok or adobo manok. And then here, the new cook time is one hour. So we can go ahead and check our database if that is updated. So with a quick refresh, it shows now that the information from our recipe record here that have the ID of one is now updated. So we successfully updated the recipe record that we have in our database. So in the next section, we are going to delete the record. So stay tuned for that. See you on the next one. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. So in the last section, we created the update recipe view function. In this section of the video, we're going to create the delete recipe view function. So before we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add more um, records to our recipe model. So if we open our database here, we only have one record. So let's try to create another one. So let me just go back to the home page. And that's going to create again another one. So recipe eight. Okay, let us now create one more. So just more main dishes. Say for example, chicken curry. And this is a description. Ah, this is a Filipino dish. Then let's set it to an hour to prepare. And then serving the same five people. And let's submit this. And it tells us that the recipe is created successfully. So let's go ahead and check our database and really quick refresh. You can now see that we have two records here. One is adobo and one is chicken curry. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create the delete view function. So let's go ahead and go back here in our views. So to create the delete recipe view function, what we're going to do is we are going to first call the login required so that only users who have the login details would be able to delete the recipe so define a view function delete recipe and then we're going to pass the request and then let's add the recipe primary key as the parameter for this view function and then what we want to do is we want to get the record with the recipe primary key. And to do that, we're just going to copy this code that we have here on the top. That will do the same functionality. So let's just use that again. So the condition here is the recipe primary key is the same as the primary key of the table. And then we have here, it should be the user who created the record. That should be the one who will request for that um, record here on the recipe variable that we have and then what we're going to do after we retrieve the recipe is we're going to delete it so recipe dot delete 
then what we're going to do is we are going to create a success message so message success and let's give it here the request and the message that would be recipe deleted successfully then we're going to redirect the user to a certain page let's say for example let's go to the core and let's check what page can we redirect the user to say core and home let's go ahead and use the return redirect and then we're going to pass here the app first so that would be the core app and then the view function which is the home then what we're going to do next is we're going to create the URL. So as you can see here in the update, we use the recipe primary key because we also add it here as a parameter. So we have to add it in our URL. And that is expecting an int or an integer. So we also, we will also get the recipe primary key to be able to delete the recipe or the record for our recipe. Now what we're going to do is we're going to call the path. Then we're going to pass here the delete slash and then we're going to copy this int that we have here primary key and paste it here next is we're going to access the views file and then doing that we can access the delete recipe view function next is we're going to add the name and the name would be delete recipe also now let's try this out if this will work let's go ahead and try this out so let's just refresh for now so it has a error here on this part. It says that the view must be callable or a list tuple in the case of include. So that would be the part of this views that we have here, this path. We're going to open here and then that would be the line eight of the URL, this one. So maybe what we're going to need to do here is we're just going to clear. Then we're going to Python manage that pi again on server. Maybe it cannot reload again. So shows that error then let's try to open this on our browser so let's close this out and it is working so what we're going to do now is let's try to go to profile first make sure it's working all right then let's access the recipe app then we're going to pass here the delete slash delete and then maybe we want to delete the record number one or the record that have an id of one and it shows us here that the, that recipe has been deleted so the view function successfully deleted the record. So let's try to check that in our database. And let's open up the recipe table. And as you can see here, the record number one is now deleted. So we successfully created the delete functionality of our recipe model here. So for the next one, we're going to create the create ingredient view function for the ingredient model. Hello everyone and welcome back. So for this section of the video, we're going to create the create ingredient view function. So this would allow us to be able to create records for our ingredient model. So let's go back first in our model. And as you can see here, we have the foreign key of the recipe. The recipe is this recipe model that we have here. So therefore we need to first create a record for recipe before we can use the foreign key or the primary key from the recipe. And then we're going to pass it as a foreign key to this instruction model. So to be able to create this, to create a record for the instruction model, you're going to first need a value or a record for the recipe model. So currently we have one record and that is enough for us to be able to create a ingredient for this recipe. So let's go ahead and call the login required so that only users that are currently logged in can access this view function so we're going to create an ingredient so create ingredient and then we're going to pass here the request also the recipe primary key so the recipe primary key um we are going to use this so that it would be the foreign key in the instruction model this would, this would be this part right here we're going to add it as a foreign key so let's go ahead and first we want to be able to display the ingredient form. So we already import the ingredient form here on this part. So what we're going to do now is first we will have here return render and then we're going to render the recipe form. So recipe form dot html and we're going to pass our dictionary. The first one would be the title. So the title would be create 
recipe ingredient. And for the next one, we're going to add here the form, but we haven't had the form yet. So first, we're going to call the ingredient form. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call this form, put it inside of a variable, which, which we're going to call form. And then we're going to pass that form in this dictionary here. So form and form. Then we're going to try this out. However, we still have the recipe here. So let's say, for example, let's delete that one first. If you want to be able to show the ingredient form first. So get the URL. And then we're going to add here first is the path. And then we're going to add here in the URL the recipe primary key first. We're going to need that. So let us return this one here. Just like that. And then we're going to... Maybe we can leave that out for now, but they, they will have the same name. That will be the problem. So let's add here the ingredient first. Ingredient slash and then create. So that we won't need to pass the recipe, um, the value that we're going to use for this parameter here. So we're going to remove that for now. You just want to be able to display first the ingredient form. So let's go back here and the URLs. And then we're going to add here the views file. And then we're going to access the create ingredient view function that we created earlier. And we're going to give it a name. Let's give it the name of create ingredient. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try this out if this would work. So let's go ahead and check first the terminal if it's running. Okay, the server is running. And let's go back to our page. And what we're going to do is we're going to access again the recipe app. But this time we're going to access the ingredient and then slash create. Just like what we did in our URL, recipe, then next is ingredient, then create. So let's go ahead and open this one, and it opens the form. So this form here will accept our name. That would be the contents of the form. That would be the, see here the name. So we have here the step number, this one. Okay, this is the ingredient form. We have the name here, and then the quantity, this one, and then the metric. So everything displays correctly. So for the recipe that would or the recipe field here, which is a foreign key, that will be passed to this view function as a parameter that will be passed to our URLs here. So now we confirm that we can display the form. Let us now add the parameter recipe primary key in our create ingredient view function. So we're going to copy that. We're going to use this so that we can get the foreign key. So now what we're going to do is we are going to need the functionality to be able to pull the data. Let us now create a if statement. So if the request is equal to post, the request method is post. We're going to pass here for now. And the else would be we want to display the form only. So here we are going to call the ingredient form. And then we're going to call the request.post. And then we will put it inside of a variable form. And then we're going to call here if the form is valid, meaning all of the inputs that are added by the user is valid. In this part, this is where we want to save the ingredient. So let's pass it for now. Then we will handle the else. So else, it means the input from the user is not valid. Therefore, we will display here a message. So messages dot error. This is an error. Then we'll pass here the request. Then the message, which has failed to create ingredient. Okay. So if the form is valid, we will now save this. So first form dot save. However, we will set this first to commit false. The reason for that is we want to be able to add the recipe primary key. So this would be the ingredient. Then what we're going to do is access the ingredient and then the recipe underscore ID, which is, which is our foreign key. And then we're going to set that to recipe primary key that we will get here. So recipe primary key. And then we're going to save the ingredient. So ingredient dot save. Then we will add here the message. Uh, success and then the success message would contain first the request 
before the message that would be ingredient created successfully okay let's try it out so let's go ahead and create a url for this one see we have a url already but we're going to edit it we're going to add the rcp primary key in the url itself so what we're going to do is first we're going to give the primary key or the recipe primary key before we access the ingredient just like this one so the recipe and then we give here the id of the, that specific record and then we're going to create an ingredient for that specific record so now let's go ahead and go back here and then we want to be able to create an ingredient for let's say for example that would be the second so the id is two so we're going to give here first the id of two before the ingredient create so let's go ahead and that's okay and now we're going to add here the ingredient well for a chicken curry we will add here the chicken first chicken and then let's say your quantity is one kilo so the metric would be kilograms and submit this the ingredient is created successfully let's go ahead and check for the ingredient table and let's refresh and you will now see that it has a value here for the id of one and that is chicken with one kilogram chicken all right and we have here the recipe id which is set to two so they are now connected so we are done with creating our create ingredient view function so for the next one we're going to create the update ingredient view function okay welcome back so in this section we're going to create the update ingredient functionality or view function so to create the update ingredient view function, we will need two things. So the first thing is the recipe primary key before the ingredient primary key. So the ingredient primary key can be seen by accessing the recipe ingredient table. As you can see here, we have the ID of one. So that is the ingredient primary key. And the recipe primary key is this one, which is the ID. So let's go ahead and create the update ingredient functionality. So login required. And then create the function update ingredient and in here we're going to pass the request then we will get the recipe primary key so the next thing that we're going to add as a parameter is the is the ingredient primary key okay now first we're going to use the get object 404 to get the record with the recipe primary key as the id so we already have that here on the top so we're just going to use that and paste it here then the second thing is we want to get the ingredient primary key using the get object or 404 again so get object or 404 and we're going to give this the model which is the ingredient Next is we're going to get the primary key, which is the ingredient primary key. And then we're going to pass here the uh, recipe. It will ask for an instance. So an instance that we have here is the recipe. Next is we'll store it into a variable called ingredient. Okay. So next, what we're going to do is we want to be able to first display our form. So Let's go ahead and return render request then the path of the form.html just recipe then form.html recipe slash form.html here we're going to pass a dictionary title then for the title we have the update recipe ingredient then we're going to pass here the form but we don't have the form yet so let's go ahead and add the ingredient form then we're going to add here the form for the ingredient form it would take the instance of the ingredient and we're going to pass here the form okay now let's try if it, if you can display the ingredient form with the values of each input field 
So let's go ahead and create the URL path. So let's go ahead here and we're just going to copy up one and then we're going to just make an update. So recipe, primary key, we need that. And then we also need the ingredient primary key. So ingredient, we want to update. So we'll set this to update. Then we're going to add here. It would be an int. It should be the ingredient primary key. Just like in our view function, we have here the ingredient primary key. Let's copy that and make sure that it is spelled correctly so we won't encounter any problem. And here, instead of the create ingredient, we want to call the view or the update ingredient view function. Okay, let's try this out if this would work. Let's go back to our page. And here, currently we're going to create. So let's say we want to update. And then we'll give here the ID of the record. So let's go back here and make sure that we get the correct ID for the ingredient. So that would be 1. Let's go back here and pass the 1 at the front. And it closes out the server. So let's go back and let's check that. And it uses the parameter int, which is, isn't a valid Python identifier. So let's try out and close this first. And then let's clear. And then let's check for the URLs. So we have here the recipe primary key. We confirm that this works. Ingredient update and then ingredient primary key. So this should work. Let's go back to our views. On this one, we first get the recipe object. Check it out here. And then I think what happens is that it didn't reload properly. So Python managed to buy run server. Then let's open this up. And then let's check again for that specific URL that we give it. That would be the recipe slash and then the ID of the recipe record. That should be two. Then ingredient. We're going to update the record that have the ingredient ID of one. As you can see here, it retrieves the data, which is the recipe ingredient. Let's check that out here. It's chicken. And the quantity is one and the kilo is uh, or the metric is kilograms let's set the quantity of two and let's say two piece chicken let's now try to submit and then it won't have any functionality for now because we didn't add any so the only thing that we want to add or we want to try out here is we want to be able to display the data so we can see here that we already displayed the data now we want to be able to add a functionality that would update the um, record. So let's go ahead and create an if statement here. So if the request that method is equal to post, we're going to pass for now. And if it's not post, we're going to display the form with an instance of the ingredient. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to add here the ingredient form. Then pass through the request, that post, and we're going to set the instance of this form to ingredient. Then we're going to add it inside of a variable, which is form. 